picture a movie so bad. It has 4% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 4.3 on IMDb. It lost $63 million in the box office, and it is the greatest superhero movie I have seen in a long time. <laughs> I'm talking about the movie Zoom. If you haven't heard of it, Zoom is a movie starring Tim Allen, Courtney Cox, and Chevy Chase. If you don't know who those people are, Tim Allen is of uh, the Shaggy Dog, if you've ever seen that, the Santa Claus, if you've seen any of those movies. You know Tim Allen, everybody knows it. Buzz f***ing Lightyear, he's Buzz Lightyear. I don't know how I forgot that. He's Buzz Lightyear. We all seen Buzz Lightyear. There's a, just a movie that just got released about Buzz Lightyear. Courtney Cox, she was in crazy things like, oh no, Scream. Like a little little niche, little, you know, sitcom TV show it aired like 90s, early 2000s. I forget the name of it. I, just, I don't know, something called like Friends or something, you know, just that small show, you know. Chevy Chase, National Lampoon, The Christmas Vacation, you know, all those vacation movies. That's him. He's in this f***ing movie. He's pretty not the best in this movie, but he's pretty good sometimes. This movie cost $75 million to make in 2006 and only brought $12 million back from the box office. Has terrible reviews on everything except for Hoopla, which it has like almost a perfect score. It's like four and a half or something. That's this. It deserves five stars. It, it is the best superhero movie I've seen in a long time. Maybe I'm just nostalgic for movies like this. They need to make more movies like this. They're very fun movies. Movies aren't fun anymore. They have to be serious. They have to have a deep meaning. And, oh, I miss movies like this. I had such a good time watching this movie. So the movie starts out just like any like old early 2000s superhero movie. It's like panels and they're giving you backstory and stuff like that. You meet the Zenith Squad, the squad that it introduces the main character of the movie, Zoom, or Tim Allen's character. Uh, and you really don't need to know the rest of them. They're not that important, but uh, you do need to know Concussion because he's the bad guy of the movie. Oh yeah, and the, the sidekick Doctor, which is, you know, Chevy Chase's, that's his character, but eh. it's just a superhero team. They were working together to help protect the universe. Their powers weren't strong enough, so the government funded a thing where they can get this like gamma-3 radiation shot into their body and it'd make them more powerful. So of course, they did it. Zoom got faster, but it made Concussion evil and he tried to destroy the Zenith Squad and he succeeded on a few of them. So the only way to, you know, get him back was, I guess, to run around him super fast, cause a tornado, suck him into another dimension. And I wish I was joking. That's what happened. After that, we go to a title card, which also shows us that we're going to be in Area 52, which is where m most of this movie takes place. It's uh, honestly like probably like 90% of the movie takes place in Area 52. And then we start off the movie with this sickest joke I've heard in a long time to show us which direction this movie is going to go, which is perfect. This movie is perfect in every way. Dr. Grant, I speak Greek, not geek. After that sick joke, we learn that Concussion is still alive and he is going to be coming back in 12 days and that they need to get superheroes to stop him again because all the other ones just are dead, I guess. I don't know. After the general finds out that Concussion is still alive, he asks if they can get the team back together. The only one left is Zoom, so they have to find Zoom and get him to join back with the Area 52 squad. Then cuts to Zoom, also known as Jack by his real name, because he doesn't go by Zoom anymore because he hates Area 51. 52, I'm so sorry. And he's never going back there. But he also gets a little snippet where he lied about losing his powers. He can shake his finger really fast. And he like, he, he, he makes his milkshake with his finger. It's kind of weird, but kind of cool. But in order to get him back, they kind of have to trick him. So he sees this really cute lady, also known as Courtney Cox, across the street in this really cute dress. And then she starts walking across the street. And then a car is coming. Oh no. And then the car hits her. Kind of. It drives past her and then she faints. And then he helps her up and he takes her back to his auto shop and then the government comes up and they're like what's up zoom and then he's like my name is jack because he fucking hates the name zoom and pretty much they, they're like hey we need you back to help us you know we're getting the the band back together and he's like no i hate you guys and then they pull out a fucking gun they're gonna shoot him because oh god my, my camera could not handle the extremeness of my movement they pull out a fucking gun they're gonna shoot him because he doesn't want to come back but it turns out it's just a dart gun that's not they're not gonna kill him they, they need him alive so they just give him a little little sleepy dart and then they take Take them back to Area 52. Next up, they show off the rest of the cast, all the kids that are going to be a part of this movie. Starts off with a cute little blonde girl named Cindy, and she has super strength. How do we know? She flings a little boy into a tree. To be fair,
fair, he was trying to steal her candy, so he kind of had it coming. Next, we get to meet the teenage girl. Her name is Summer, and she actually has telekinesis, which is pretty cool and kind of useful for the whole movie. She shows us off by uh, also splattering like spaghetti and shit on her bully's faces, which is also they had it coming. Next, we get to meet the, the cool teenage boy, Dylan. He's so cool, you know, he's got the vibes, dog. But he has the power of invisibility, and he shows it off because he gets he gets embarrassed in class that he doesn't know Newton's first law or some shit. He turns invisible, and then the whole class is just like dumbstruck that he turned invisible in front of them. And the last little boy, Tucker. Now, I don't know what to call Tucker's power. Tucker, you know, you know like Miss Marvel from the Marvel Universe, her power, she can like make her limbs bigger. That's that's what he does. And it's also where I figured out I've seen this movie before. Because for some reason, there's a scene engraved in my memory of this kid's ass getting comedically large and him jumping in a pool and leaving the pool completely empty. I don't know why that is the scene that's burned in my brain, but that is the one that I, that's the only scene I remember from my childhood. Jack wakes up strapped down to a chair in Area 52. And right when he wakes up, he gets asked if he wants to stay there. And if he doesn't want to stay there, he can just go straight to prison. So obviously he's like, how's prison? I, I like I've never been there and then they're like oh yeah we'll pay you five hundred thousand dollars if you do this and he was like why didn't you lead with that and I'm like why didn't they lead with that that's a smart idea anyways he takes five hundred thousand dollars and all and he's gonna help train these young superheroes to be really powerful and stuff so they can stop this guy next we meet Miss Holloway which is Courtney Cox's character and she's gonna help him train the kids because she's been around for a little bit longer and they don't use gamma radiation anymore to make them more powerful they use like actual encouragement <laughs> and then they check out a bunch of kids with powers they get in a line they like try out to be a part of the team it's pretty it's a pretty goofy scene honestly and a lot of kids get rejected but there's this one kid there's one kid that had potential and they rejected him just because he hit jack in the face with a bunch of spitballs this kid could chew up paper and then spitball like a machine gun it was fucking cool imagine what you could do with that just give him like a lead pipe and they give him like fucking bullets you can just like spit bullets out of his mouth and then he could just murder people like you you probably just encourage him to become a super villain you idiot why didn't you take him i got really mad when i saw that i was like that kid had potential and you just fucking rejected him just like that i also need to mention um smash mouth you know th the shrek song all star yeah they made the music for this movie and every single song slaps the every single song in this movie is very good and i had a great time listening to it after they choose the four teens we just talked about earlier they have to go and you know get a little pep talk from jack but um the boy he's a little he's a teenage boy so he he's got puberty and stuff so he's a little horny and he he's got eyes on the girl because she's like all cute and stuff he tries hitting on her and then she straight rejects him because he's a pussy Oh yeah, and this little girl, this little girl, she's adorable. She's just the cutest thing in the world, and everybody thinks so. Even in this scene, they all like admire her because she's just so fucking adorable. Anyways, Jack gives him a really bad pep talk. He pretty much is like, "Yeah, I got locked here for many years, and they they stabbed me with gamma, and then and they they made me do this and this." And he's trying to encourage them to kind of like leave and leave the program. Then Courtney Cox's character, she's just like, "Ah, oh, no, we don't do that anymore," and so she has to like try to convince him to you know give him a better pep talk. Also, Zoom does not know his brother is coming back to life they've kept this old like a secret from him the whole time they're using him as bait to lure his brother out so they can kill him and get rid of him that's why he's here and that's like the only reason that he is around pretty much they like they can't he's no use he can't use his powers anymore wink they just here they're just there to use him as bait so they can capture his brother next clip is dr grant and jack they're in a old locker room it looks like dr grant actually shows jack an old super suit that he made him before he quit the old squad and so he's never seen the suit and he's never worn it and it's really nice looking actually the next scene shows miss holloway showing the kids why jack is important because they don't know who this man is they've never heard of him and he is a very famous superhero even has comic books made about him and so when they see this obviously they get excited and they have to go bombard him while he's eating his lunch they're like i didn't know you were a superhero and he's like oh really and he's like being fucking stupid and stuff like that but then they get super excited they do this awesome handshake and then jack pulls this shit out of nowhere he makes it he pulls this he, he makes this joke we're superheroes <sighs> yes you're definitely white kids i'll tell you that there is a white people joke in this movie and I love it. So out of pocket, so out of nowhere, and I died laughing when I saw that or when I heard that. I, I did not expect that at all. And there are a few jokes in here that are a little, they didn't age very well, but that one, 
And very nice. I oh my god, that one was so funny. Next scene shows the kids. They're kind of just you know training, doing a little training thing. So you can see that they're improving, kind of. And I just want to point out that Cindy, she she can carry five tons, two and a half tons in each hand. That's just the minimum. Not even the minimum. She does. She's holding it like this, like not even like holding it up like this. like she's just like carrying it like with her her finger and thumb, and she she straight chunks one through a window. Needless to say, this girl can beat the shit out of Goku in any day, and I will forever think that and forever say that for the rest of my life and nobody can prove me wrong the next scene shows jack and miss holloway and he pretty much is like the kids they he has no hope for them and he doesn't even know what he's training them for and then the next scene after that we find out that miss holloway doesn't know what they're training for either with five days left until concussion comes the kids still don't know how to do anything and they are playing baseball with the other staff members it's not something they should be doing and the next day they're they're going to get i think suits they're going to get fitted into some suits so they can wear it so they don't die when they get into a battle cindy has minor anger issues i've noticed it it, it kind of starts off at the beginning when the kid's trying to steal his her candy and she flings him into the tree and there's a few moments here and there you know jack says something to her when she's holding those two and a half tons throws one through the window in this scene she wants to hold his hand he says no she gets mad so she grabs and squeezes his hand and he's like ah, ah, okay stop yeah and so she like breaks his hand it's awesome i love her she's so cute next we meet this adorable robot named mr pib like the soda mr pib and he is awesome you always need every superhero group needs a robot friend the avengers have jarvis the fucking i forgot what these guys are called the zoom squad they have mr pib and mr pib is cute and he also has thoughts of his own even though he's a robot and he's not supposed to have like he, he's not an AI. Remember, Summer has telekinesis, so she actually touches Mr. Pib and she finds out that he has thoughts of his own and he kind of sentient, just kind of scary because how did a robot get sentience without an AI being installed in him? Just saying that's a little creepy, but Mr. Pib himself is adorable and I love him and he is what makes this movie perfect in every way. Next, Jack takes the kids on a little field trip so he can show them something cool and you know what he goes to show them? They have a UFO. When you find out you have a UFO, what do you do? You take it joyriding. You know where they go? Fucking Wendy's. Out of all the places. Well, I guess you're in the middle of the desert. You don't really have anywhere else to go but Wendy's. But they go to a Wendy's and they go through the drive through with the UFO. And that kind of gets them in a little bit of trouble with, uh, you know, the whole Area 52. So when they get back, Jack gets in trouble again. But, you know, what else is new? Kids have another training montage with the best cover of Under Pressure by Queen I've ever heard in my life. But now I have two more examples to prove that Cindy has anger issues. One scene, uh, they're getting their finger pricked for, I guess, blood work or something. I don't know why they're getting their finger pricked. He pricks Tucker's finger and then she realizes that the doctor is gonna hurt her. So she pushes the science dude like a million miles an hour into a wall That's just, and she just got angry for no reason because he was about to hurt her. So that, that's, that's one example. Another example is she's trying to get a, a name for like a superhero name from Jack, but Jack was being a little asshole and he was just like doing data on her and she was like throwing this, these like weights onto this dart thing. And, and he's like, well, score nine more points and I'll give you a name. And then she like throws another one and then she's like, I need a name. And then he's like, we'll score another point and I'll give you a name. And she gets fucking mad. She picks up a forklift with more weights on it and throws the whole forklift and then like walks away. So yeah, that two, two more examples. She has anger issues. After a tough day of training, they are kind of mad that Jack is being kind of mean to them. I guess it's like he's pushing them a little too hard now, but he doesn't know what they're training for. They don't know what they're training for. Miss Holloway doesn't know what they're training for. So they they're all just a little irritable at the moment, but he tries to heal things by bringing them desserts and snacks after their training and just sitting down and talking to him. When Cindy asks him, do you care about us? And then he kind of swerves the question. And then uh, Summer is like, he doesn't care about us. He He's only here for the money pretty much. And he he's never, he's never gonna actually care about us. So they all get mad and they just like leave him alone. And now there's two days left until concussion comes and the kids still aren't ready, but they are getting used to their powers and they're getting better with their powers. So it is good, they're, things are going pretty good. Dylan has this habit of not doing whatever people tell him to do and whenever he does that they just throw him into this isolation chamber which I think is very fucked up. This whole point of this thing was to train the kids to be better without doing any kind of punishment so I guess that kind of beats the purpose of what they're doing here. But Jack comes in and he starts talking to him about his past and how he used to escape out of these cells whenever he got in trouble too. And then he somehow talks the scientist guy into letting Dylan free so he can just walk around and show him and talk to him stuff and get to know him better because Dylan is the farthest 
emotionally away from everybody. While Jack is showing him around, he's showing him the big laser thing that shot Gamma into himself. And he's like talking to him about it. And uh, Dylan kind of keeps like dazing off. And then Jack asks him why, what, what is he doing whenever he does that? Like, what is he looking at? And then he's like, oh, nothing. And then Jack asks him if he gets headaches every time that happens. And then he's like, yeah, that's when we find out Dylan has a new power. They call it Mind Sight. And it's kind of like, it's not looking into the future, but it's like you're in one room and you can see what's going on in another room while it's happening. He also mentions that his friend Marksman from the old team used to have that power and that's how he could like, you know, notice it very easily. After he mentions Marksman, Dylan starts asking about the other team members and what happened to them. And uh, Jack just tells him straight up, he tells him that concussion killed him and concussion wouldn't be evil if it wasn't for the government. And then we also find out a bombshell that I kind of spoiled earlier in the video. Concussion is is his brother and concussion's real name is Connor and the reason why Jack is so pessimistic and so like distant from all the kids and stuff like that is because Connor killed off his whole other team killed all of his friends all the people he loved and he doesn't want that to happen to them he doesn't want to lose all that all that love and stuff that he's already put into the kids <laughs> I got so short no not that small I don't want to be that small hello I moved. I was I was trying to finish the video before I moved. Um, that didn't work. I forgot how uh, daunting and uh, time consuming moving is. So yeah, I I tried to finish the video before I moved, but that did not really work out. So so they're back into the classroom and they're waiting on Jack to come in, but he's taking too long. So you know they're just like chilling out. Jack finally comes in with these people and they're all tailors and they're gonna get superhero suits. So he comes for a good reason, thank God. And as he comes up, he he walks up to Miss Holloway and then he's like. Oh, did you miss me? You, you seem kind of excited to see me. And he's like, yeah, a wink, wink. And then she's like, yeah, I'm a little excited to see you. And so I am just saying that um, Jack and Miss Holloway are going to fuck. I just know it. It's going to happen. It, it has to happen. And then there's another training montage as they're doing stuff. There's so many training montages in this movie. During the training montage, though, uh, the scientists actually make this new kind of fabric, I guess, that are super stretchy so they can give it to Tucker because Tucker gets like, you know, he, he gets big, his arms and shit get large and stuff. They made a new discovery for Tucker for his suit. I think that's pretty cool. Then it cuts to the military flying out in this big hole in the desert and it turns out that concussion is coming sooner than they thought and that they need to find out how to get him. And so the government dude's like, do you have a plan, scientist man? And then the scientist man tells him the plan and you want to know what this plan is they're going to get the kids to distract concussion then they're going to throw a big net on concussion <laughs> they get a, a big cool big cool high-tech net they're going to shoot it at, at concussion and and it has these these metal things in it so whenever he does concussion blasts on it it's gonna it's gonna concuss back on him and, and he's going to concuss himself and i guess like crush his own skull or something i have no clue I, it, it sounded a lot cooler on paper. But if that doesn't work, I want you to listen to what plan B is. Well, if Zoom's still out his powers, his speed could create a mega vortex, which would trap concussion and reverse the dark effects of the gamma radiation. So plan B is that if Jack still had his powers, he could run around concussion. So this is on an if. They don't even know he still has his powers. He does, but they don't know that. If he still had his powers, he could run around him and then suck the radiation out of his body and then he'd turn good again. But the thing is, they tried that already in the backstory at the beginning of the movie and it sucked him into another dimension. So if it didn't work the first time, why would it work the second time? And even better the second time. That doesn't make sense. You're supposed to be smart scientists, but you're you're basing it on of well, if he had his powers, we could do this. But you don't think he has his powers, so why would that be plan B? You should make a, a different plan B. And then it should be like a big surprise that, oh, he still has his powers and that this could happen to the scientists. But they kind of, I think they I think they know. I think they know he has his powers. And they don't want to tell him or the government that they know. So they, they just like, well, we, maybe, maybe if he had his powers, then we could do this. Uh. Stupid. It's so stupid. Then it cuts to a, a prom for some reason. The kids are getting a little dance because they completed their courses. They finally, they finished their training. So that's pretty cool, I guess. And the scene really isn't needed, but uh, it does show that Summer and Dylan, they, they flirt a little bit. And then it shows that uh, Jack and Miss Holloway are flirting a little bit. And that also proves my point that Jack and Miss Holloway are going to fuck. Then the military man runs in and ruins their prom because he's a jerk. And then Jack says the most uncalled for joke. Is insult in joke? It's not even a joke. It's not, it, would, it would not slide in today's time. Listen to this. Guards, Holloway, make sure it happens now. Move out. Boy, for a straight guy, you're dramatic. Yeah. 
it not uh, so uncalled for so uncalled for <laughs> anyway the, the military man is gonna shoot the kids with radiation anyways because he feels like they're not strong enough yet to fight concussion and that pisses everyone off especially jack so in the middle of the night jack steals the kids not really he kind of just grabs them wakes them up and then takes them to the secret place that he used to hang out with with the old zenith squad so he's like saving the kids from possibly dying from this radiation shit they're gonna shoot in them and then when he takes them to this spot they get their superhero names cindy gets named princess because she's a little princess. Summer gets named Wonder because she has wonderful magic. I don't know. It, it's something. It was Dylan. Dylan named her Wonder and he was flirting with her. So he was like, yeah, you're wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Tucker names Dylan Houdini because he can disappear. Ooh, interesting. Actually pretty smart. And then Dylan names Tucker Mega Boy. <laughs> I wonder where they got that from. <laughs> then Dylan uses his mind sight to figure out that they're training so they can fight concussion. And that just pisses Jack off even more. So he gets up and walks away. And I guess he's going to confront the military man. Before Jack can get there, the military guy sees that concussion's portal opens early in the morning and that he's coming way sooner than they thought even beforehand. As Jack is walking down the hallway, he accuses Miss Holloway with being in on everything and thought that she knew about concussion coming back, but she really didn't know. When Jack gets to the military guy, he tries to explain to him that the kids aren't strong enough to fight concussion. And as he was talking to him, he got a little angry and accidentally showed off that he could still move very fast. He like wiggled his fingers. He was like, but the military guy gets kind of mad at him. So he's like, throw Jack's in a cell. And so Jack gets thrown in the same cell that Dylan was in. They start to prepare the machine for the radiation so the kids can get injected by it. And they task Miss Holloway of gathering the kids with a few guards to take them down to the machine so they can get injected. Miss Holloway ain't having that shit. You know why? Miss Holloway shows us that she has powers. She's had powers this whole time. What? So she can just like blow. She blows like rainbows and she can blow hard. So that's, that's, <laughs> she can blow hard. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Anyways, she blows the guards away, literally. And then they go and rescue Jack. Little Cindy punches the cell door down with Jack inside. And then they all go to the UFO so they can escape. When they get in the UFO, they blast off to the desert. And they take Jack to the spot where his brother is coming back from the dimensional thing, the dimensional rift in the middle of the desert. Forgot to mention this before, but Mr. Pibb came with them. And a summer sends Mr. Pibb out on the battlefield field as well with Jack so Mr. Pip can distract Concussion and help Jack because she just kind of knew that he was going to have a hard time. Concussion comes back and he hasn't aged at all somehow. They don't explain it. He, even Jack says something about it. He's like you're in some kind of weird time and space thing where you never aged and Jack is like old as fuck now so I, I don't know why but he hasn't aged yet and he also has red eyes because he's evil and evil people have red eyes and Jack and Concussion get into a fight like almost right away like even like brotherly family shit he calls him like jackie and jack does not like being called jackie and the concussion uses his little concussion power and like blasts him and then he just keeps doing it and then he figures out that jack doesn't have his powers anymore and so he's just going to kill him that simple before concussion can kill jack mr pib does his job and he distracts concussion pretty well concussion like literally just drops jack and walks over to mr pib don't know why he thought that was a good idea he could have just held jack and turned and said whoa mr pib how cool, you're very old and I've known, known you since I was a child. While he's distracted, the feds decide it's a great time to shoot him with the net. So they load up the net and it takes forever. It takes such a long time for them to shoot this fucking net. While they're loading the net up, the squad pulls up in their brand new suits and they're just white and they don't look that good. They look kind of trash. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and just say that there were prototypes and that their suits weren't ready yet, but they still looked very lame. It was kind of uh, lackluster to say the least. And while he was distracted by the new squad, the Fed decided to launch the net and you will know what happens. It, he, he shoots it away. He, he concussions, it, it flies away. And then it, it, what were they thinking was gonna happen? They think that it was actually gonna work. Kind of, It's not fucking Looney Tunes. It's not gonna work. <laughs> I didn't, it's a bad plan for from the start but when he deflected it he accidentally sent it flying towards cindy cindy's just standing out in the middle of the thing and then she's like oh no and it's like flying at her like kind of fast but like and then she had enough time to move but she was just i guess frozen in fear and she was like help me zoom and then zach gains his powers back and he runs really fast and he saves cindy and then he gives he gives this line <laughs> cindy are you okay cindy you're safe now you're okay it's me it's jack Please, Cindy, don't do this to me. You're all right. Come on, princess. There's, there's just no emotion. 
There's no emotion in the, that in that whole line. Cindy, Cindy, are you okay? Cindy, it's me, Jack. Cindy, please don't do this to me, Cindy. Cindy, please. I I, I love you. <laughs> There's no emotion in this man's voice anywhere. After that, he picks up Cindy and he takes her back to the whole crew. And then you obviously, they have to have a heartfelt conversation about being a superhero Why the villain is 10 feet away from them. And they could obviously very easily, he could just murk the shit out of them. He, he uses his fists to send sonic waves here and there everywhere. And, and he, they're just standing there and he just lets them. And he's like, he's talking shit to the government. Like what the hell? Shoot your shit at. Zach tells the kids to wait two seconds because he's gonna run super fast to area 52 and then get his suit and as he, as he's running i made a looney tunes joke earlier as he's running these are the literal sounds that play in the movie this is i did not put these sounds in Anyways, after after that silly shit happened, he runs, gets his suit, runs back to them, and he has this cool zoom suit. And he's a, he's an older man that has a, a like a beer gut, so uh, it kind of doesn't look the best in, on him. But he's got a new super suit, and it's pretty cool. And then he finally embraces the name Zoom. He's like, I am Zoom. Then they use the power of teamwork to distract Concussion and get him into the vortex, because Zoom starts running around in circles, and he creates another vortex because I guess it's gonna work this time. It surprisingly works. He he gets turned back into good and the, the cgi for the scene did not look bad i was noticing that and i was i was like it actually looks pretty good for like 2006 or something like a pretty decent good job connor's eyes turn from red to blue to signal that the evil is now gone and then they kind of get up and hug it out and then he meets the new crew and yeah that it's just like you know ending of the movie stuff after that all the kids live out their dreams or i guess their dreams they, they have a better life cindy she's in a play she's a princess just like she always has been summer is a cheerleader and her and Dylan are together so he got what he wanted and Tucker he's playing soccer he's a goalie which I feel like is a little bit unfair he uses his hands and he like makes his limbs bigger so he and it, they, there's no way another the other team will be able to score so I, I guess that's cheating but if he's allowed to play he's allowed to play that's pretty much the end of the movie I actually I really I really enjoyed watching this movie you should watch this movie if you haven't seen it I I'm very bad at explaining movies but it's a actually it's not a bad movie <laughs> I mean it is a bad movie but it's like they're just having fun they're having fun Fun making this movie and you can kind of tell there's scenes where you can tell they're just having fun having a good old time playing making this movie well, yeah i really actually enjoyed it and i want to watch more movies like this if you have another good bad movie that you want to see me talk about let me know in the comments below i'll totally do it also make sure you hit the like button if you like this video you like this content you want to see more like it i'm so close to 500 subs I'm actually going to do a q a when i hit 500 subs so if you want to ask me a question you can join the discord in the link down in the description below and you can ask me a question i have a channel for you to ask questions i said question like eight times in one sentence go check out zoom i have been king news me thank you for watching the video i love you all and peace